look at different ways to solve proportions. To solve proportions, there are three main methods. We've already talked about the first method using mental math. Today, we're gonna to look at another method using the multiplication property of equality. And we're gonna look at a third method using the cross products property. So first, let's look at using the multiplication property of equality. We want to use multiplication to solve these proportions. And we're allowed to use multiplication as long as we multiply the same number to both sides. So in this first problem here, we had 5 sevenths equals x over 21. We could also read that as 5 divided by 7 equals x divided by 21. So to get rid of the 21, I'm going to multiply each side by 21, and here it cancels out. On this side, when I multiply 21 by 5 sevenths, or 21 over 1 times 5 sevenths, I can do some cross-reducing, and I get x equals 15. Let's try this with another problem. So here we have a divided by 15. On this side, we have 12 divided by 10. We want to get a by itself, so we're going to multiply by 15 on both sides because our multiplication property of equality says that's okay as long as we do it to both sides. So here it cancels out. On this side, I have 15 over 1 times 12 tenths. I can do some cross-reducing here. And I get for my grand total here for A, 36 over 2, which will reduce to 18. So my value for A is 18. A is worth 18. All right, let's take a look at another one here. This time I have Y divided by 6 equals 2 divided by 4. So to get rid of this divide by 6, I'm going to multiply both sides by 6, and it'll cancel out here. On this side, 2 fourths times 6 over 1. I can do some cross-reducing here. And I get... 6 on top over 2 on the bottom, or y equals 3. All right, let's look at solving a few using our cross products property. So here we had x over 8 equals 7 tenths. So I'm going to multiply my cross products, and in a proportion, my cross products should be equal. So I had x times 10 going this way, and 8 times 7 going this way, which I can simplify to 10x equals 56. Now to solve for x, I'm going to divide each side by 10, and 56 divided by 10 leaves me with x equals 5.6. So let's try that here. So I have two cross products. I have 12 times y, and I've got 5 times 6 which I can simplify to 12y equals 30. So to solve for y, I'm going to divide both sides by 12, and y equals 2 and a half, or 2.5. All right, this one's a little more complicated because I've got z plus 1 here. So my one cross product here is 15, times z plus 1, z plus 1, I put in parentheses here, and I got 40 times 6. So 40 times 6 gives me a total of 240, and I'm going to divide both sides by 15 here to get rid of the 15. So I'll be left with z plus 1 equals... Sixteen times, I believe, and I'm going to subtract one from each side, and I get z equals fifteen. So in this case, z would equal fifteen in this problem. All right, let's look at some proportions that we can use to solve um, different type of unit problems. So let's say we're trying to convert 7.5 inches into centimeters. Well, they're not going to convert exactly because they're two different systems. So we're going to round to the nearest hundredth, 
and we're going to use this wavy equal sign which means approximately equal to because it's not going to be exact since we're going to be doing some rounding so in this case since i was converting inches to centimeters i went on google and i actually asked google you know how many centimeters are in an inch and it was approximately 2.54 centimeters to one inch i rounded that to the nearest hundredth so i can set that up equal to the information that i have which is i'm trying to find how many centimeters are in 7.5 inches now in order to solve this one i'm using cross products so i'm multiplying 2.54 times 7.5 and 1 times x so 2.54 times 7.5 gave me 19.05 and 1x can just be rewritten as x so this missing value here is 19.05 centimeters so 7.5 inches is approximately equal to 19.05 centimeters so let's say we were trying to convert liters into quarts. So the first thing that I would have to do is do a little bit of Googling and figure out approximately how many quarts are there in a liter. So I did exactly that and there's about 1.06 quarts that make up one liter. So I'm gonna set that equal to what I have here. I don't know how many quarts, I'm gonna call them X quarts and I've got two liters. So once again, I'm gonna do my cross products here. I've got one liter times X and 1.06 times two. One X can be rewritten as X and 1.06 times two gives me 2.12. So I've got 2.12 quarts. So my missing value here is 2.12.